Hey everybody. Well, we told you it was part of our CNC kitchen table build, engraving, design, and the whole nine yards. We were going to quickly, we were going to touch base or as quick as I can on using foraged materials. Now, the one thing I enjoy doing up here in the Upper Northeast is I love to go out and I like to find all sorts of crazy, spalted, just different foraged hardwoods. Uh, my three species, species, excuse me, that spot the best up here are poplar, maple, and beech, okay? And not to forget birch. What I do, though, is I never cut anything that's alive. I never cut standing good trees. There's no reason to. Up here, no, we don't have uh, the horror storms that the southern hemisphere of the United States gets, but we still get a lot of high winds. We get a lot of blowdowns up here. You know, it can, it can blow through the side of a mountain and take out acres and acres of trees. So we have, point being, we have plenty of good stock that doesn't involve cutting down a good live tree. This is just an example. This is just a, a limb off of one from out back that's, uh, that's fallen over. I just ran out and cut it off real quick. If you decide to maybe go out and harvest, uh, maybe you've got a bunch of overgrowth and the stuff in there is super thick and it's maybe the size of, let's say, a baseball bat. Well, you want to go out and you want to cut off 50 or 60 of them. I would go out and what I do for my back room is I have a bunch of drums out there. I keep things at 18 inches, 24, 36, 48, and then I keep my longer stock for my... Uh, for our beds, for our custom engraved beds, I end up taking and I keep stock uh, up to 86 inches for the kings because you can cut a king down to a queen and a queen down to a, a twin or a full. You get the idea. All right. What I would suggest if you're going to work with fresh green stock, this is a, this is just bullseye. It's a sanding sealer. If you're going to cut fresh green stock, cut your ends, cut them down to whatever length you need. Put some sealer. I would recommend some Arbor Seal. I don't have any Arbor Seal here right now because I've got plenty of stock put up in the back room. Put your Arbor Seal on the bottom. Just run a quick coat around it. It will help to uh, slow down the drying process because I had some beautiful fruit wood out back from an old, old uh, apple tree that someone had given me and they twisted up like Twizzlers. And unfortunately the person who gave them to me, they didn't know and, and neither did I and you know the wood went to waste. So seal up your ends, put them in a rack, let them dry slowly. Okay, we've got a fan back there, we've got a dehumidifier, but we still dry our stock slowly. Now, as far as bark removal goes, yes, here we have a draw knife. I will highly recommend one of these. These are a great item to have. They make quick work of anything. If you want to get your bark off, uh, I haven't built a sled up here because I don't do a lot of this, like I've told you before. Most of, the, uh, most of the material I go after comes off of fall down, blow down trees. A lot of the bark is already gone. But if I were to do it, I'd use a draw knife. You can see how quick and how nice this works. And I want to be careful that I don't end up cutting myself here. But you can see how quick that goes. I've also done these with a, uh, with a fixed blade. I mean, you're just looking at taking bark off here. It's not rocket science. You know, and you can take it down to clean white wood. You can, uh, you can leave it partially brown. It, it's, you can strip it down until it's fully white. You know, you can leave little accents in it. That's entirely up to you. I've even gone as far as stripping these down with a utility knife if I had to. There's nothing, there's no rocket science here, folks. It's just, it's simple forage materials. You do need to have a little patience in letting the green stuff dry. I don't work with anything green up here, I told you that. Um, and all my material is truly stuff that has already been on the ground a while because I like the aged stuff, I like the spalt, I like the crazy different colors, I look for all the twisted up. And the one thing that I always do when I am out in the woods I always make sure I've got, well, in one of our other blogs, we do have a, uh, basically what we carry. If I go on a day hike, I've got my pack, but I always make sure I have a folding saw with me. You never know what you're going to find, and 
you may be in an area where you're not going to go again, or you may not make it back there ever. So I try to make sure that if a really unique piece of material comes up that I can carry out that I need to cut off, well, I can bring it home with me, all right? All right, hang on. We're going to show you now. I told you how we're going to, uh, we're going to show you how to make a, a tenon without a tenon cutter, okay? So hang on, and uh, we're going to show you how to do that next, all right? All right, guys, we'll be right back. All right, hey everybody. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you real quick how to make a tenon without one of them fancy schmancy expensive tenon cutters, okay? I have an old metal sawhorse here, nothing special. Just one of the old heavy duty fold up sawhorses with a little metal handle on it. You can throw them in the back of your truck, take to the job site, okay? This is nothing more than an automotive ratchet strap that you would use to strap down, say, uh, you know, your lawnmower, your riding mower, maybe a motorcycle in the back of a trailer or back of your pickup or something, or your ATV or whatever. I put my log on top and I make sure that I crank him down so that he's held, he's held in place pretty good. Next thing I do is I look for my hole saw, match up the hole saw to, uh, to the size spade bit that you're going to need. Now I told you you can do these, you don't need to go out and buy that big expensive Milwaukee two inch boring bit. You can go down and you can buy a, a spade bit for under, I think you can buy a, a hardware store brand for, I have a local Ace, I buy them for like $5.99. They're going to be good enough to make a piece of furniture out of or two and then you can pretty much can them and or try to resharpen them, whichever, but we're going to basically take Look for a hole saw that's got a bit of a, at least an inch and a half deep neck on it. This one is uh, one and three quarters, so I think it's going to work pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera in here nice and tight. You guys can see a little better as to physically what we're doing, okay? So hang on, we'll bring the camera in and uh, we're going to make this tenon real quick, okay? All right, everybody, we'll be right back. All right, well, here we are. We can see our strap. It's pretty tight. I don't believe our log's going anywhere. So this is just an old scrap piece of white KD cedar that we had kicking around. I think I pulled it out of the burn pile, actually. Well, find your center the best you could. Uh, these are going to have bits on them. I would probably, depending on the size of the, uh, the tenon that you need, if you make them real small, you may want to try to remove your drill bit because I think the, the, the bit hole in the center of your tenon doing it this way would really compromise the integrity of the tenon itself, okay? But in the case of this, this is a two inch, it's obviously going to be a quarter inch hole isn't going to harm anything. We're going to go into the center or as close to the center as we can. And then it helps we have the drill going in the right direction. All right, that's pretty much it. I know that I need at least an inch and a half for my, uh, for my tenon to go into my hole and for it to look right. The other thing I can do is I know that that was an inch and three quarters. I will come up, I'll make a mark on this log, and I'll make a mark all the way around. You can go at this with either a, a sawzall, a hand saw, whatever you choose. But that's going to be the next step. So what we'll do is we'll go out, and if you cut a little beyond the tenon, or a little, a little in too much, don't worry about it. The chisel, uh, once we get the ring off, to expose our little doweled makeshift uh, tenon, when we saw it off and we go to chisel our 45 to, to finish it up and clean it up, we can, we can manipulate anything that doesn't look quite right with, it, with the hammer and chisel, all right? So, folks, hang on one second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, we're going to mark this, and we're going to cut it out. And then we'll be right back. All right, folks. We're back. Okay, well, as we can see, we've got our, we've got our little tenon. 
It's sticking out. It looks just like a dowel. Although this is a little bit bigger than two inches because I think somebody came in and borrowed my two inch hole saw. I don't remember who, but for the sake of this example, this will work fine. The deeper the hole saw, the better you can be. This is, uh, I thought it was an inch and three quarters. No, it's like an inch and five eighths. What I would do at this point, uh, and all I did to get this out, we just dropped a sawzall. I measured in, I just traced the line, and I went down with a sawzall. And basically, a little piece like a donut came out. So, what I would do, grab your favorite chisel, one that you're comfortable with, get comfortable, and I would just come in and I would just start chipping this stuff out. Now, this is a big log. I probably should have found something a little smaller for this example. I would just sit here and keep working. Now here's what I can tell you. If you like doing this and, and you think you're going to like building the log furniture, for goodness sakes, go buy yourself a two inch tenyon because here's what I know. If you were to only build a single bed, if you were to only build uh, your own kitchen table or whatever log project, maybe you've got a camp or a cottage and you'd like to fill the whole place with log furniture, you know what this stuff costs because you've most likely done the research on it. It is expensive. Well, this is why. There is so much manual hands labor that go into some of this stuff, not all, but some, that uh, it warrants a hefty price tag. Well, when you look at it from that effect, to go out and buy a hundred and fifty to a two hundred dollar middle of the road tenyon now kind of seems like small change, all right? Because if you were to go out and outfit your entire house with this stuff, that's a very small investment to make. Yes, you could take it all the way down, and you could work a nice forty-five up if you chose. That's a possibility. I would just personally round these edges a little. Uh, I would get my wall maybe down halfway. But I would not personally go all the way down to the bottom of the dowel and try to 45. You'd be here forever. And if that's the case, then it would certainly warrant you going out and buying the tenyon cutter. Like I said, I have done them this way again and again and again. It's time consuming. It's not the way I would choose to do it. But I know that, uh, I know that some of the specialty tools out there, they're not cheap. Okay? And this can be done, like I said, I've, I've done a few things like this, and I've built a few uh, log pieces of log furnishings this way. And I finally got tired of it, broke down, bought the tenions. But as always, I hope this helps. I hope somebody gets a little something out of it. This is, uh, like I said, this is just one way of doing something. No more, no less, okay? Again, I hope it helps. It, it, it gets your foot in the door if you're interested in building log style furniture and you can do it with minimal expense, okay? But, again, a tenyon cutter is faster. All right, everybody. Well, you take care. God only knows we've got a pile of video to edit and hopefully get some of this stuff uh, out here in the next, uh, the next day or so. But uh, everyone take care. Thank you, of course, for subscribing and following us. And uh, happy tenyons. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care.